Chapter 9, Preservatives and Disinfectants. So today we're going to look at uh, the carbonyl function group, two different types, aldehydes, ketones. Uh, aldehydes we're going to see are uh, very useful and ketones, uh, not much in the form of ketones is going to be of use to us in a funeral home. So with the uh, carbonyl group, you've got a double bonded oxygen coming off of carbon. And you've got that double bonded oxygen there. And here you've got uh, R groups where R can be um, an alkyl group or a hydrogen. And over here, you've got a double bonded oxygen to that carbon. But over here to the side, instead of just an R group, it's an O attached to an R group to make it a ketone. So aldehydes are going to be um, important in embalming fluid and ketones are not. Uh, sometimes your aldehydes are going to, um, if it has a common name, it's going to have aldehyde as part of the name, IEPAC name, is going to have that AL uh, suffix on it. So it's going to be, in this case, formaldehyde is methanol. Uh, acetaldehyde is ethanol and so forth. So your aldehydes are uh, going to be an ingredient in the embalming fluid both as a preservative and as a disinfected, disinfectant rather. Um, it is going to uh, aid in um, slowing down putrefaction uh, because of the proteins, cross-linked proteins that are there, and also uh, because the aldehyde has these cross-linked proteins, then they are going to disinfect a dead body and keep it from decomposing as fast. So formaldehyde was discovered in 1859 and was not identified as such though until 1869. It's a colorless toxic gas. It, it has a disagreeable, a colorless toxic gas with a dis disagreeable odor. So you can't see it, but you can smell it and it's not gonna smell very good at all. So uh, when dissolved in water, when the vapor is trapped, it's sold as a 37% solution in water um, when it is an aqueous solution, then uh, it is commonly referred to as formalin. So it's not actually formaldehyde, it's methylene glycol. Uh, the names formaldehyde and formalin, though, are oftentimes uh, interchangeable, so you might want the, the label, the label claim. So uh, paraformaldehyde, the 37% solutions of formaldehyde uh, will polymerize over time. So that paraformaldehyde is a white solid that, that's going to collect in the bottom of the formalin solutions. Uh, acidity is going to promote paraformaldehyde formation. So um, it says if it is buffered to seven uh, to nine pH. Methanol also prevents paraformaldehyde formation. Sometimes though the solid paraformaldehyde is useful because it can, uh, once it's in the body, it is going to release the formaldehyde gas and allows that formaldehyde gas to get to the areas that you would not be able to reach otherwise. So um, the quantity of formaldehyde uh, that's in your solutions uh, is given by an index number. So if you had a 20 index, that would mean that 20 grams of formaldehyde is in 100 mils of the solution. 
So uh, if it is low, it's between zero to 18 and is going to uh, provide low moisture for the decedent. Um, and also if it's medium, it's 19 to 27, that's considered to be normal moisture. And then high index range would be 28 to 36 and so uh, high moisture. So if you're using a high index, then you're wanting to dehydrate the tissue because you've got too much fluid in the cells. Low index, uh, then it's going to be hypotonic and therefore you're going to, I think I said that backwards, uh, hypertonic, um, you're, you've got too much uh, in there and are going to need to remove some of it. Uh, I didn't say that right. Uh, low index is hy hy uh, hypotonic cells. And so you're gonna use it when you are trying to increase the amount of moisture in the tissues. So high index may also be used uh, when you have um, cases where you have high advanced decomposition and ammonia and urea therefore could interfere with the formaldehyde. You can have uh, dialdehydes, so it would have two aldehyde groups attached. Uh, dialdehydes, here are a few examples of those. Glutaraldehyde um, is shown here. It is a, a dialdehyde. So uh, you can use it both uh, a supplement or as an alternative to formaldehyde. Uh, it's not going to shrink or constrict the tissue. So uh, some instances it would be advantageous to use this over formaldehyde. Uh, aromatic aldehydes, as we talked about aromatics uh, before, you've got that benzene ring uh, that's attached and along with it, it's going to have a distinct odor. And so you can increase the, uh, the good fragrance um, by incorporating some of these uh, aromatic aldehydes, so anise aldehyde, so it's gonna smell like anise, which is like licorice. And then you've got almond flavored uh, benzaldehyde and cinnamol, I can't say that, cinnamaldehyde, uh, which is gonna be like cinnamon. So uh, more uh, favorable scents than uh, you come into contact with in, in your line of work. So uh, aldehydes uh, have a close cousin, or although I guess I call it a sibling, the ketones. So again, uh, you've got this uh, uh, scenario. I'm sorry, that's aldehyde. Here we've got the ketone. So uh, the way that that's arranged uh, is different than with the aldehydes. The ketone that uh, you are most familiar with is uh, acetone, so we find it in paint and paint thinners and nail polish remover. Uh, it's also good at dissolving super glue in the funeral home. Um, you have to be careful with its use around plastics, coatings, containers. Um, it's not used uh, as an embalming fluid additive. It can be, however, used to um, smooth out your wax in your restorative art. Um, also, uh, in rebuilding the structures on the decedent. So the uh, main ingredient in manufactured funeral home service chemicals is acetone. So it does have some uses, but um, not uh, the same kind of uses as the aldehydes.